The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. I did the last hour sitting in for Steve Rhodes. Voice was uh, hurting him somewhat. And uh, so I went through a bunch of charts, but I have a whole series of questions from email. So many people are now using the Chapman Wave methodology, especially folks who have got my CD introducing uh, the Chapman Wave methodology. That's the CD if you're looking at the charts right now. It's right here. I was just discussing the rogue wave analogy. Um, I, maybe I'll get to that a little later on. But um, I, let me just also quickly mention, if you go to the front page of TFNN, you will see that I have a, uh, a live Master Trader series coming up, and that's going to be at B Babson Executive Conference Center here in Wellesley, Massachusetts, Saturday, March the 9th, 8.30 in the morning till 5. It's open for anyone who's done my Level 1 course or taken my, any of my webinars on these different techniques that I use. You must have my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. If you haven't, just give us a, give us a call because you need to have it. And that's the more one one. The other thing is, even though I will be discussing the the waves, peaks, etc., which is really important, a great deal is going to be identifying which candles for um, the inside wedge, upside target. Let me just show you a chart. I was asked in the den earlier. Does this work at all time frames? Five minutes, yes, maybe, but does it work on fifteen and thirty? So I grabbed a chart. I did the cues live. I showed the cues, and they were at that particular point, um, way low there, about 66.50. As I started doing them, I gave a left side, right side projection. I gave the inside wedge projection, and that said that the cues should get to um, they should get to the area of 60, around about 66.80 to 67.01 within the time frame that I'd given would have been uh, by 10.30. Um, today and look what happened not only did it do that it went to the 200 period exponential moving average in leg E and that's the 15 minute chart but look at the MACD the way that's so beautiful look at the look at the stochastic holding above 80 percent on balance on balance volume says there's still room to go to the upside even if there is a pullback which I would expect at this particular time look at the W formation that's forming just so much and that's what we'll be discussing patterns and how they repeat over and over again Please, if you want to know anything about it, just email me at Basil Chapman at TFNN.com. Uh, just, I'm really looking for this to me. Tie wise is so perfect because we're in an inflection point here. The way the Dow has acted over the last couple of days has been so important. How it bounced, making a, a 16 cent difference between the low of Monday and the low of yesterday. That is so important in this particular move right now. The volatility index dropping to 15. I said in my opening call this morning, I said, watch it. If, if, if it pulls back, it's going to be very important. A TLT jumped and it's pulled back. Let me just run the numbers and I'll go through all the stuff that I need to look at. Um, if you go to the Dow, the Dow's up 90 at 13,000 991. Would you have believed on Monday at the close that within two days we'd be testing the 14,000 level that we were at? I mean, would you believe it? Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. The S&P is up uh, 8 at um, 15.05. You've got the comp index up 27 at 31.57. Let's see, gold is now down 12 at 16.02. It's going to be a big test to see if money flows into gold um, to make leg B up in the daily chart. That's going to be very important, how gold is able to take out uh, the high that it made just uh, yesterday, I think it was. Um, you've got silver down 21 cents at 29.04. Um, copper is bouncing a little bit, no big deal. Uh, no, it's down. Copper's down at 130. We've got some really conflicting signals right now. And um, crude oil is up at 92.81, and bonds are up 230 seconds now after a big day yesterday. That fascinating market. Always, I mean, that's, that's how you can do this. I've made a daily call on the Dow since 1984, 82 or 84. Every single day, just about, even when I'm being in Australia or South Africa or wherever, I make that call. 
Uh, sometimes, of course, I can't. But as long as I got, as long as I got the data, I will make that call. And I still do it to this day. Um, I give every day. I give the the Dow chart. Now look at the 120 minute chart. There, there, I had a question. Uh, Jason had answered, asked me a question. He service uh, think or swim doesn't come out with the same chart. I remember this is this is not the first time I've heard about it. Uh, most software packages are very close to what I've got here at TradeStation. Now the difference is, and I looked at it very closely because it's got a blue background. I wasn't. I didn't see time specifically, but I could not. See See, my low bar, 1481.75, occurs at 1715 military time on the 25th of February. I bet that yours is different. I've got a feeling that you've, you are, that bar is included in that big bar that came down. So I'm, all I'm going to say to you is I can't see time on it. If you can give me some, if you can send me back, the, you don't have to send me the chart or just tell me. The different bars that you've got starting on the um, 25th of uh, February, starting at about 4 o'clock from the close, on, uh, uh, from the last bar going to the close on the, on, on was that Mon on Monday? Yeah. And then just sort of g give me a time uh, so that I can see, because I have one bar that is not a 120-minute bar, and maybe that's the difference. So I need to know what your, what, what your time reference is that's all because whatever it is if you matched me you would get the same chart pattern so you're not matching me so your time specifics is moved either to the left or the right and i just needed to know that so that's number one number two is next question was uh, I, w I was wondering if you could go over some of the emerging market ETFs, the EM or the FXI. Let's just do that right now. First of all, let me show you that the E-minis made a topic 1530. This is the S&P E-mini March. It made that pattern that I call the body, the neck, the head, and the beak. And when the beak concludes, you've got to be prepared for a pretty darn good sharp, sharp move back up. And then this particular waveform is done. Other techniques need to take over. And in this particular instance, the 120-minute chart is doing exactly what it needs to do to help both the MACD and the, the stochastic in the daily. So this is the 120-minute chart. Fabulous move up above the 1505, I think it was, 1505. 200 period exponential moving average resistance. One of the reasons of my opening call, we got out of our DXD 200% short was kind of insurance, part of a trade, with a little bit of a gain, is I did not want to be stuck in that if this market was going to make it higher high for leg B in the Chapman Wave methodology. Uh, I just didn't want to do that. And yesterday we almost got the I, the, the uh, TZA. Uh, we missed it by one penny just left it off today and left it off i knew if i put it in i'd say hey let's just try i wanted to have a clear mind we're in a cash position with three stocks on the long side all of them making money one one is up fabulously the other is up very nicely and the one is just up okay and that's fine with me because i have my list of stocks that i do want to get so i want the money i'm looking more at the long side oh i'm sorry we have a short stock which seems to uh, be struggling to 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 push higher, uh, but it's it's a lousy company, and I wanted to get in, and I've not had great success with this. I, I told subscribers only once. I think we had some really nice success, but most of the time we get stopped out for a very small loss. But I keep trying with this stock. It's going to go down. I hope it goes down with us. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I get stopped out today. But I just had to do it because it was not a, a pretty chart pattern. So that's the story. Now let's go to the EEM. EEM is uh, the uh, Emerging iShares MSCI Emerging Market Index. Well, let's get to that right here. Now, I had considered there was a chance that I might have gone along this particular um, ETF. It is the iShares Emerging Market Index Fund trading at 43.13 EEM, up 20 cents. And one of the reasons is it had what I call a silent doji. I teach that in my, in my Master Trader series. And that came from a truff, uh, truff F on the downside. We talk about troughs. Also, there's a pattern that I look at, which is a channel pattern. It's a long, it's not, it, it has the same premise as my... Uh, um, falling axe that expanding wedge but it's more traditional in the sense that most people look at it as a channel 
And what I was looking at is I thought, I don't mind missing this. I want evidence that it can close above 43.33. That's number one. I want to see evidence that the stochastic and the MACD are following the price because at 17%, the stochastic needs to get uh, much higher to really power this thing so that it can break the upside resistance of the channel uh, line. Remember, two lines create a, create a channel. One line is a trend line. So this top trend line of the channel at 43.94, that is only like a dollar away to break out. And I said, you know, I'm going to give it a little bit of room. I think that the emerging markets might be a place that fund managers would go to. But the monthly chart, the weekly chart, did a beautiful left side, right side price tie match from the high. And there's another technique that I'll be teaching. I'm uh, spending a lot of time on it in this particular workshop. It's the phantom peak. Hardly ever use it on anything other than below 10-minute charts. When I do use it, it's for a specific reason, under specific conditions. I cannot, I cannot uh, abrogate that that loyalty I have to my Chapman Wave methodology by just suddenly creating another technique. This technique, in this particular instance, I found I have it in General Electric as well. Just once I've used it. Look, the low of thirty three point forty two on the seventh of October. Went to a peak A and then a peak B, higher peaks. At 43.22, it pulls back from the 28th of October. Quite a steep pullback. And it goes to a high of 44.10 on the 10th of February. And the very next bar is 44.10. In this methodology, it's only used in specific occasions because I was looking at the unbalanced volume. I was looking at the 120-minute chart. I did a detailed study before I decided I could use it what I call a phantom peak. There are specific parameters that have to be met, and if they met, I'm able to use it. And fortunately, why do I want to use it? I want to get to D as soon as I can. I don't want to be stuck. If I call that peak D right there, a peak C, because I was very, being very strict, and then the stochastic and the MACD turned around, and it goes from 44.91, and I'm waiting for that one penny above, why would I do that when the thing's going to drop to 36.57 over a 10% correction? I want to be ahead of the game. If I get out and it's early, fine. There was another thing I could have done. I could have done peak C1 and peak C2. I'm going to spend some time on these particular. This is, what, this is what level two is about. It's a review plus all the new techniques plus, plus the refining of techniques. In other words, I love painting my house indoors. I don't do much on the outside. I just love it. Over all the, ever since I came to the United States, I've always a, a painted our apartments. Oh, you could get people to do it. I love doing it, and I do a good job. I've learned how to do certain things through the experience. So I've gone from the core to the variations, the corners, how I use the tape, what tape, etc. Well, that's the same thing here. So, hey, don't call me. I'm not painting anybody else's house. I just love doing mine. I'll be back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. For your viewing pleasure, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. Now, I mentioned my uh, my Monster Trader City is coming up Saturday, March the 9th. But a week later, down in San Mateo, California, you'll see it on the front page of TFNN. Tom O'Brien and Daryl Martin of Nadex are going to be giving this... It should be a fantastic a live workshop. So be sure, register now. You know that these events have been f sold out. They are fantastic events. Uh, both of them have just wonderful techniques. Consider it. If you're in the area, you've got to sign up the Dynamic Master Trader Series. It is really uh, just... I've seen Daryl do this, and he comes up with... What a fabulous strategies. It's just, uh, I haven't had a chance to get into it. I will later this year. I just, there are other things I'm doing right now, but it looks fabulous. And the risk, you know exactly what your risk is. And the appreciation um, can be uh, twice, three times, four times. It, it could be huge. And you've got all day, because if you put it in for a certain period, it can go against you all day. And then the last hour, you can suddenly see it come back. It's not like options that uh, kind of disappear, and then often the options do not come back because of de uh, uh, time uh, depreciation. So think about it. Let's go back to the charts. I'm looking at the EEM Weekly. The e we EEM Weekly gave beautiful left side, right side price time match. It gave that phantom peak, and as I said, the peak C1 and C2, with C2 is just fractionally under C1. It, it it just needed like an eye blink to make that leg D and it failed. But the stochastic and MACD are failing. That's really that's what I'm going to spend time on because 
the more techniques that you can have that stop you from making errors, these errors are costly. That's the best way to trade. Know your risk. So it plummets down. It goes to 20, 36.57. We're looking at the EEM, the iShares, uh, Emerging Market Index Fund. And it goes to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. Peak D is on the four, week of the 14th of September at 42.83. Pulls back, holds the line period moving average, dips once underneath. It goes right back, and then it goes to peak E in a shorter time span than the left side, right side price time match. And then it pulls back, and it pulls back with the MACD just now turning uh, a little bit negative. The beta, that's the distance between the fast moving average and the slow moving average, very narrow. But the stochastic's at 69%. That's the reason I was just a little hesitant saying, you know what, I want a little bit more proof to say that this can go higher. But it's the weekly, the monthly chart that is really interesting because there's an uh, it looks like to me like a symmetrical triangle between the major high of 2008 at about 53, was it? 55.85. And the low was down at the 16, uh, 18.22 area in November of 2008. And and in 33.42. Now look at this. If you're looking at that nine period moving average and the MACD is slightly positive, the stochastics at 81%, that monthly chart is improving a lot. It'll break down if the EEM goes underneath 40. If it breaks under 40 in the next three weeks, two to three weeks, that'll be a big negative. But if it's able to even get close to the high of this month, 44.64, there's just a really good chance it's going to go to leg E about 45.33. So the question is, the, nice analysis. I really enjoyed your analysis, uh, Doug. Um, and I agree absolutely. Month, the monthly is in leg B at this particular point in a retracement uh, mode. And the... Um, Weekly, I've got the weekly in E. I think you missed one peak, and I know exactly which one it would have been. It would have been this one right there. I, I'm, I bet that I'm right. The week of the 10th of August at 40.78. The next week was 40.74, 4 cents. I bet you missed that. And then the very next week was a higher high at 40.84, uh, 6 cents higher than peak uh, C. Uh, peak B. That's at peak C to D. So this is leg E. So that I'm, I'm willing to bet that that's what you're looking at. Now, the question is, do you want to buy it? I'm going to make a suggestion, since you watch the stock market and you watch the charts really closely. If you are interested in this, I would nibble right now. If you're going to buy X, I would buy a quarter X right now. I just start a little position. And that little position can have a stop. It's at 43.34 right now. Let's just say 43.18, you're buying it almost at the high of the day. No problem. Why? Because you're going to have a very tight stop, and that tight stop is going to be one penny under today's low, and I'll explain why. Because the doji candle of yesterday was at an open of 42.94 and a close of 42.94, and today's low is 42.92. So if you go underneath it by one penny, the doji candle itself of yesterday, that says to me, it's going to be tough to break out above it if you come back down. So a tighter stop, you've got like a 19 cent stop or whatever it is. Um, that's how I would do it. Just start a little position. We'll talk about Ford when I get back. That was the next. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Editions Hour. Dow's up 89, S&P's up 11. We're going to go to calls in a moment. Let me just say, I had a question then about TYX. Well, look at this. You remember how I've spoken about peak Ds, how important it is, how we study that in the Chapman Way, four peaks, and you've got to be a bit careful. It can go to E, which the TYX, the T, uh, the TNX, and the FVX, this is the 30, the 10, or the 5-year T bond and T note yields, did three times when the yields went to 48.43 back in 2009, 2000, and 2011, 40, 48 in the 48ths. And then 47.89 peak E. And then it plummeted down to troughs. And what happened is in the last move down to 24.52 in the TYX, it went mm -mm. peak A, B, C, D. I made a big deal about this peak D. I have to just check one thing right now. That was uh, 32, 20, 32. Yes, peak D. And it's peak D. It's actually peak E in the 10-year uh, First time I've got a divergence like that. That's interesting. And it is peak D in the five-year T notes. So this is very important. Pulling back. Can it make a sudden spike to E? Yes, it can. But this is one of the three bears, uh, Vixie, Bondi, and Dolly. Uh, dollars pulling back a little bit, just getting a little bit toppy here. Bonds try to rally, and they failed. Look at the yields. The yields are actually um, um, working quite well. So... The TLT 
is at 118.84. The higher bonds go, the lower yields go. So we're watching bonds, and if bonds are able to power, if the TLT is able now to get to the 120, 30 area, that's going to push the yield down even more. And just as we go to the next quarter, um, well, first quarter in this particular section, would WOOD, this is the iShares S&P Global Timber and Forestry, this is starting leg C up. If it makes a new recovery high this week, that'll extend leg C. If it doesn't get above 47.91, it'll make a peak D with a, a peak C with a D to come. The most interesting thing is that the, uh, the HGX, which is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, has made a peak D. And it made it once before. And it's made it three times in this move. It actually went to an E as well. But it's gone to three BIMOs. And this one's a pullback. And how it acts by Friday afternoon. It's a weekly chart. If on Friday afternoon it's at 182 right now. If it's able to get to 186 or 188, especially 188, that will be very positive. This are the other charts that I want to look at now. Uh, not now, but a, a little later on. That's the UUP. That's the dollar index. That's the SPY and the TLT together. But we'll do that straight off. This because we've got Max in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, online. Hi, Max. How are you? Good morning, Basil. Uh, you think Whole Foods uh, bought them there? Well, let's put it this way. The amount of times that I go to Whole Foods... It should be at record highs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in your chart work, you can see the candle of yesterday and the candle of today. So far today, this is the first bullish candle we've had since it broke down at the double top from 96.93, right? Yes. Do you have any position? Is this a question where you've already got something or you're looking to, to enter? And what is your uh, time frame? I'd like to nibble about around here. Okay. Here's my suggestion. Because the 120-minute chart in WFM Whole Foods Market, which is trading at 85.42, up $1.46. I have this as probably making some kind of a hat-trick top in the monthly chart at peak F at 97. And there was a round number somewhere. Oh, on the rebound, there was a round number. Uh, I got it somewhere. And what I'm looking at is there's a chance that the nine period moving average of 89.34, that whole 88 area to 89 is going to be very strong resistance. The, the weekly chart hasn't shown any signs, any positive signs. But, you know, money managers, fund managers who have had the stock, who have loved the stock, I don't think they're just going to give up, even though the company said it's, it could be a tough year, and my suspicion it's going to be a tough year. I'm going to make a recommendation that says, if you are thinking of nibbling on this stock, if you did it, a really, I do mean a nibble, just to get a feel for it, just a nibble right now at 85.46, I'm not sure I would give it the low of the day of 83.70. To me, two points in this particular for a nibble, even a nibble is not good enough. I would start a small position now, and what I would do is I would have a stop on the small position of about a point, and I'll explain why about a point, not more than a point, because it's at 85.47. If it fails and it goes, the high yesterday was 84.69. So if it fails and goes below yesterday's high, then there's just a real chance it's going to have to do a lot more backing and filling. In fact, I'm going to make it even better. I'm going to say, if you nibbled it at 850 right, 850, 85.50 right now, I would anticipate, even though a chunk of the move to the upside might be done, if it pulls back, it really shouldn't pull back based on the 120-minute chart below um, this line right there, 85.02 to 84.92. I would have that tight a stop in it. And yes, there are two reasons for it. The pattern that's forming says it could make an inverse head and shoulders in the 120-minute chart by bouncing here, then coming back and probably retesting support at about the 8460 area. I don't really want to take a risk that 8460 is going to slide. I would prefer to say it's going to make a V-shaped pattern. It's going to tackle the bar of the 25th. That was two days ago of 87.07, and it's got to do it real soon. So my recommendation, do a nibble right now. 
after you've done that, it's got to go all the way through Friday. If it hasn't broken under 84.50 by Friday, I'm going to then, I would love, if you have a chance, call me Friday. Let's look at it together because that's going to tell me whether this is a stock that wants to at least attempt to go to 88.99, the 200 period moving average, but even more important, will it try to fill the gap at 89.88 to the high, the, the day made that high of 96.93, so between 95.51 and 89.88. That's a huge gap. My suspicion is <clears throat> this is the move right now that's going to tell you if it has strength to do it, and I don't want to mess around. So I'm going to recommend that if on Friday it's acting well, I might say to you, get a trading position, another small position, treat it as a trading position, and that trading position is the one you want to see if it can get to the 88 to 90 area, and that's the one that will have a, a, a trading stop, and you can keep this as a core because it gives you the comfort of knowing you've gone in at just uh, one and a half points or whatever the low was yesterday, 83.07, within one and three quarter points of the low, of the most recent low. So I hope that helps you. But I would also say to you, I'd be looking to short the stock any time it gets over uh, 90, 88.99 and 200 period moving. If it can get close to that or a little above it and makes it an arch formation, it's going to be on my page to be a possible short. Now, lot's going to have to happen between now and then for this stock to, to turn around and say to me, technically, it's not a damaged stock. It's, uh, Ken Shreve uses that word, damaged stock. I think it's a damaged stock on the monthly. So this would be a counter-trend rally. could be a nice little percentage. And not only that, if you get a very small position now and then you're able to add a trading position, it's going to give you a real good feel for Whole Foods so that even when it turns down, I don't know if you're short, but if you do short, even if it turns down, you're going to be able to to be able to use this particular technique of trying to get a core position and a trading position, even on the short side. So I hope that helps you. Yes, it does. Okay, Thank so you. just just to sum it up, overall, I'm negative on Whole Foods market. I think the monthly chart is telling us a big story. The weekly chart has had a, 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 a an the cup formation failure, and the candle that I'd be looking at is the major candle of the 27th, the week of the 27th of July. 92.50 was the high, 79.55 was the low. That's the candle that's going to give us an incredible amount of information. As a trade, I can see a bounce from an oversold condition as money managers either try to get into it because it's a bargain, or they're going to try to get out of it on a rally towards the 88 to 91 area. Hope that helps you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So, folks, we were looking at um, uh, EEM. The FXI was the other question I had from uh, from Doug. And um, the FXI, this is very interesting. Look at this weekly chart of the FXI. This is the um, iShares FTSE China 25. It used to be called the Shinwa, something like that. And they changed the name. So in this particular instance, it came back, and then it went slightly above the peak of 40.74 of the, uh, the week of the 2nd of March of 2012, exactly a year ago. And now look at this. This is the FXI trading at 38.29, up 17 cents. It goes to peak A, B, C, D, E, another E. I love consistency in stocks when they make Ds and they pull back. It tells you that's where you got to watch out. Or if they go to E's or F's, that's what you got to look for. So it makes a beautiful cup formation. And then it hangs around at the top. And then it fails. It goes to 41.97, the week of the 4th of January. Pulls back. And now it's hugging the 200 period exponential moving average. The MACD and stochastic are negative. On balance volumes are negative. And the monthly chart is really what I have to look at. Because I want the big picture. And the monthly chart says... Trading range about to test very important support here again on the nine period moving average. Tomorrow is the close of the month. I probably would say to you out of the charts that I'm looking at, EEM is the one I would take a position in with a fairly tight stop. FXI, I would stay away from right now. And I have to actually I have no choice, but I have to put a down arrow because it's in a sell mode right now. That could quickly change to, sell, to a buy signal. I haven't got it. I need to see the evidence of how it holds the 200-period moving average, number one. Number two is, 
I would, because of the monthly chart, the weekly chart, it's telling me to look at the daily chart, and the daily chart is a tremendous success, holding the 200 period moving average. So I've got to watch this with a doji candle of yesterday as a potential for a bounce to the upside. Let me just double check, 4197, 4193. So that was in fact uh, a triple a triple top. Now it's pulled back. Yeah, I, I would give the FXI time. I, I wouldn't rush into this. It's also not a great chart pattern for the monthly. Weekly could make the handle formation very soon if we can cross 39.61. I might even consider it in that area. I want to buy strength. I don't want to buy weakness in this particular instance. So now that's that. And then Ford. Now Ford, I had a couple of questions on Ford. Let's see if I can get to everything here. I'm going to scroll down to... Ian's question. Oh, two questions. A uh, long-time listener recently purchased a Chapel Wave CD. Wondering if you might touch on a a Ford and BAC. Oh, a little bribery there, huh? <laughs> During today's show um, or offline, if you're out of time. I own Ford at 13.50 and Bank of America at 11.50. Given the market's current uh, cautious station, uh, cautious. Cautionary status, and I invest a business daily. Marketing correction. I'm wondering if I should just cut bait on these or hang tough. Uh, for a push higher, or possibly sell some calls against it. What are your What are your What's your uh, next two weeks? Uh, one to two weeks uh, diagnosis there. Okay, Ford, nice action today. W formation in the uh, in the daily chart. Remember the E, the E M and F X I was talking about, especially the E M. That cup formation that in this particular case it broke out. Did a beautiful left side. This is this is a beauty to the candle I chose. It was a beautiful left side, right side price time match in Ford to the peak E Doji at fourteen point thirty. I would say I'm going to do the same sort of thing in this particular one as I just did uh, for the E E M. I'm going to make a suggestion about Ford because Ford tends to. When it changes direction, it moves really quick. And that's either the downside or the upside. I'm going to recommend, if you're listening, I would start a position in Ford right here at 12.64. In this particular instance, it would be a small position because I want a wider stop. It's a lousy percentage, but it's a wider stop in price. It's at 12.64. If Ford takes out the low of the day, 12.35, I would say to you, make for the small position have a one point stop. It's like an eight percent stop. It's not my it's not my preference. I like smaller stops. But the way that the MACD has a chance to deflect higher in the in the weekly chart, the way the stochastic hasn't turned up yet, but the monthly chart is actually giving me signals saying Ford is acting quite well, not great, but just quite well. I would say to you, the risk of it popping by tomorrow, it could pull back. But I'm just saying, if it does pop, it's at 12.63. F is the symbol. If it goes to 12.77, then your risk reward is much greater. It sounds like it's only 14 cents. That is, you know, that is 10%. It's horrible on the upside. You know, it got 10%, it pops 14 cents, pulls back to, uh, uh, um, 12 cents to the downside. Um, that can happen in a split second. Um, you know, so percentages, I'm not talking about percentages. In fact, I'm going to take a little bit of time now because I, I know there's some listeners who are, who are right now who are also looking at Ford, just as I've been looking at Ford. And I, I want to do some, a little more homework on it. I don't want to give you a sense of uh, something that I'm just... I'm just jumping in because the market is up and the stock is up. I want to do a little bit more analysis. Missing by two cents, not a big deal now. I'll be back. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. 
Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, last little segment here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. <clears throat> We've got Larry Pesavento coming up to you. A great show, as always, with Larry. Um, then you've got Daryl Martin. Don't forget, Diagnostic Trading Hour, the Dynamic Master Trading Series. You probably discussed that. You've got Dave White. You've got Ken Shreve. You've got Tom O'Brien right at 4 o'clock till 6. Great program. Let's just go through this again. I've done my homework. I think it's a good risk, risk to reward starting a small position on Ford. Uh, I'm not going to say nibble. I'm going to actually say small position on Ford. That's more than a nibble. But in this case, I am going to say to you, use a one-point stop. It needs to get by. It, I don't want to see it break under 12.25 over the next two days. And if it's able to get to 12.73 to 12.82, I think it's going to retest the 13.20 area by early next week. Those are the parameters I'd be looking at. The weakness is, yes, you can start a position here. It's a bit early. There might have to be more backing and filling. That's the reason why I say give yourself about a point, uh, a one point stop in the in the beginning. Um, if it goes to twelve point eighty one, I would raise that stop, and that stop would be oh around about the low of yesterday uh, or two days ago twelve ten. 12, 10, 12, 11. You can make it 12, 09. I think that's a pretty reasonable stop. 
Um, so that's my analysis there. So the IYT discussion in the den about the IYT. IYT is fabulous move. Now let me just quickly draw a chart pattern that you need to be looking at. Look how it held the nine, folks. I, if you're really interested in learning these chart patterns, come to my Master Trader series. This is on the, the March the ninth. Look at that nine period moving average. The IYT, which is the iShares, this is the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund, went, it's not even touched that line since it broke above it. Um, well, since it broke above it on the 30th of November in the weekly chart, it did touch it once, a uh, week of the 4th of January, and it hasn't even looked back until today. It went right to the line. The low today of the weekly chart of the IYT is 103.24. 102.98. That's pretty close, within 30 cents, less than 30 cents. It went there, said, I don't like it here. I just wanted to tag you to say, hi, I'm on my way out, and it's up. Now, if the IYT does break above 107.16, transportation index, at the same time as the Dow, I can't believe I'm saying this so quickly, the Dow breaks above, it's got to get into that candle. The Dow has to get into the 14... 1040 area if we can do that there's a real good chance that it's going to go above 14.088 if it goes to 14,089 I can call that leg B because that's amazing days young anything can happen we could be down 100 points by the end of the day but I have to be impressed with the resiliency of this market so before I sign off what I'm going to say is the pattern that I've been discussing for months has been a psychological and a, a an actual chart pattern. It's called the Chapman Wave Stalk Leg. Uh, uh, um, I call it a pattern. But base, I don't even think I'll be able to find the chart now. Basically, what that pattern says, yes, is that it? Is that it? Is that it? No. What that chart pattern says, that every time there is a pullback in the market, the psychology is such that it says, Buy the dips, buy the dips, buy the dips, over and over. There's not more than a one to a three-day down session, and then the restlessness of the buyers is, it becomes the focus. I don't know how long that can last. I don't even know if this really is that, that, that that's what we're looking at now. I don't know what else to call it over the last couple of days. After all, Monday was horrible. And now we're about back to where we started out. So, that's the way I'm looking at the market, that... There is resiliency. I'm looking more towards buying than shorting. And that's the way we'll leave it. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for being here. Stay tuned for Larry.